Welcome to On Another Note, one of the newest shows in Eagle Nation Network. Later on in the show, McKinley Argyle will be looking into the recent Fleet Foxes concert and Nick Fox will be checking into the newest ASAP Ferg album. And Mr. Moses will be giving us a live performance in the studio and we'll also be hearing a few words on his music. On Another Note starts right now. McKinley Argyle went to the Bomb Factory to see the Fleet Foxes' newest concert, so let's get right into it. The indie folk band Fleet Foxes came to Deep Ellum's Bomb Factory Friday, August 18th, 2017. The band includes frontman Robin Pecknold, Sky Jelsett, Morgan Henderson, Casey Westcott, Christian Wargo, and Josh Tilscott. They originally started out in junior high, with Pecknold and Jelset being the only members. They later collaborated with other band members and produced their first album called Fleet Foxes in 2008. Their most recent album, Crack Up, came out June 16, 2017. Pecknold says this album is completely different than anything they've ever done before. I just loved how many harmonies they had in the music and how each of the band members played a lot of instruments. The band uses a combination of several guitars at once, along with the flute, cello, bass, drums, tambourine, mandolin, saxophone, the tuba, and various vocal harmonies. The group opened with their first song on their new album. They played many songs from Crack Up, but also included many of their classics that they're typically known for, such as Mike Knows, White Winter Hymnal, and Blue Ridge Mountain. Thanks for that great package, McKinley. Make sure to check out the Fleet Foxes on Spotify and iTunes. ASAP Fur came out with an album August 18th. Here's Nick Fox for an album review. What's up guys, I'm Nick Fox and this is your album review. ASAP Ferg, who's been a bit quiet lately, finally stepped up this year on August 18th. He finally came out with an album which he's been tweeting for weeks called Still Striving. He has slowly been gaining attention through the hip hop rap genre. The album has 14 tracks and his top songs are Trap in a Dream, Rubber Band Man, and Plain Jane according to iTunes and Spotify charts. ASAP Ferg has multiple collaborations with artists like Meek Mill, Lil Yachty, Famous Dex, and many more. Now, let's talk about the album. Each song has its own unique vibe and message. Listen to every track myself, I can hear an old school rap flow through these, which you don't hear very often. ASAP quotes that he wanted a reason to turn up in his car. He wanted to make songs that was more than just feelings, he wanted to make it on his life and challenges. ASAP knows he's been a bit light on music, but he says when it comes, it comes from the heart. Um, we're always striving to prosper. I wanted to tell a story of Ferg, not ASAP Ferg. Like, you know, the trials and tribulations, the obstacles that Ferg went through to become ASAP Ferg. So if you are into old school rap that gets you turned up, then go and check it out. Thanks for that great album review, Nick. I know I'm gonna be checking out a couple of those songs. And now with Mr. Moses in studio. With us on the show today, we have Mr. Moses, a hip hop artist from Austin, Texas. Welcome to our show, how's it going? Hey, what's going on, guys? That's Feeling good. good. So, um, what started you off in music? Um, what started me off, I was really heavily inspired by uh, a lot of what I saw on television and wanted to, uh, kind of be those artists, um, but also in in Texas it's a little different. Um, you go to Houston, and that was what kind of put Texas on the map for hip hop in general. So uh, I grew up listening to a lot of uh, a lot of Houston rap and uh, trying to freestyle and be one of those guys. And next thing you know, just try to branch out and figure out my own avenue. 
uh, because you can't be like everyone else. You have to be yourself. So uh, that's what kind of got me on the path of uh, just rapping. And I uh, also did uh, choir in school, so yeah. I know you've been, you know, watching or listening to other, you know, hip hop. So what's your opinion on um, cultural appropriation in modern hip hop? Whew! Cultural appropriation, man. Um, well, okay, so cultural appropriation, it's, it's kind of sad the avenue that, that uh, hip hop is going down right now. And it's just, it's due to the fact that no one's being conscious. No one's being aware of the actual words that they're saying. It's always just the beat that, every, that grabs everyone's attention. And don't get me wrong, I love to, to party and to, to dance and turn up, you know, yeah. like that's a good time. And the beat is what makes that happen. Yeah. But you also have to take into account that there's gonna be lyrics that are put behind that, that you're unconsciously taking in and that in turn shapes who you are. You gravitate towards what you think you like and then you therefore become that. Next thing you know, we're just pushing this idea forward and forward, yeah. you know, and so it becomes kind of bad. Like if, if everyone on the, if everyone on the radio is talking about degrading women and making as much money as possible and uh, and and doing drugs and drinking and all this other stuff and we idolize this this theory, it's just gonna keep taking it into uh, in, into the cycle that we can't control. And as far as other cultures taking from this idea, it makes it seem like this is why we're supposed to be idolizing it. Because uh, being an African-American, we have one side of culture, and then there's another culture, side of culture that really loves what we do. They, they really love hip hop music. I mean, do you like hip hop music? Yeah, I like hip hop music. Okay. Well, there, you, so you like hip hop music, and there's sometimes there's folks that wanna say, I can do that too. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, but then there comes a point where you have to draw a line like, hey, this is not okay. You know, like there's, um, there's a lot of things that stem from that. Um, I, I don't wanna get too deep into it, but there's, there's been, uh, when I was in college, there were people that did, um, what was it, a blackface party. That's not yeah. okay. And, yeah. But they dressed up as hip hop artists. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's why we have to break that cycle. We can't rap about negativity in order for people to say, hey, that's a good idea. And then the people that started it end up being offended by it. You can't, you can't do that, you know? So okay. that, that's, I guess that's in a nutshell, my idea on culture appropriation. Yeah, and those <laughs> subliminal messages will just kind of sink in. Exactly. start to keep on following those more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that is like, we, if, you, if you don't pay attention if you, if you, okay, there's, okay, we have a lot of rappers out there, right? There's a whole lot of rappers. And this new wave has one style. They never change it up. It's always the same kind of beat, same kind of message. How long before you hear something that wakes you up, that changes your mind? Like, wow, uh, that was completely different. I wasn't ready for that. Or is it gonna be, I, it w I wasn't ready for that, so I'm just gonna keep listening to what I've always been listening to. Mm. You know, there's two ideas there. And I feel like the true origin of hip hop is getting lost in all of, in all of the turn up. There's just too much, there's too much turn up and not enough conscious hip hop. You know, not enough, um, uh, not enough uh, key points, like talking about issues, what's going on in the world. like there, we, are, we have a reality, we just choose to ignore it, to have fun, and all the while we're ignoring it, more bad stuff is happening right underneath our noses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. You can't really learn all that much about like the modern issues and what's going on from like artists that just focus on the beat and like catchphrases about money and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. And back, and back when I was growing up, there was a lot of artists that would talk about what was going on in their community and talking about how, how to fight that and, and uniting and being together and becoming one. And now we're just dividing even more so. And it's really sad, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, a lot, of, a lot of youth don't really acknowledge that because they don't really have to, you know? Um, Y'all are young. I don't know if you have jobs outside of school or not, but 
at the end of the day, there's people out there that are working, that are struggling, trying to put food on the table, and kids don't really see that bigger picture because they haven't lived it yet. And all the rappers that they idolize have already surpassed that because they're out of school, they're already making money, so they're just saying, man, I just wanna have fun. Yeah. You know, so there's a route that you can follow in two different directions when it comes to that. What are some of your favorite songs you think that do help with stuff like that? Man, favorite songs. You have to give me a minute to think on that one because there's a lot of music out there. Um, I can tell you artists for sure. Uh, Lupe Fiasco is a good one. Kendrick Lamar is a good one. Um, Killer Mike is another good one. Ooh, Killer Mike. Uh, if you haven't heard Killer Mike, he tells it like it is. And he's kind of blunt with the situation. And he's um, A lot of people would say that he's um, uh, not necessarily... Uh, he said he did propaganda like they they would call it hip-hop propaganda mm. and i i totally disagree i just feel like he's one of the guys that is really saying okay this is what really is happening and this is why we're choosing to ignore it so um he talks a lot about um government issues uh political stance and um talks about neighborhood crimes and police brutality um uh, there is a group, I'm actually in the group, we're called the Super Friends. We actually uh, are taking a, a, a different approach to uh, the, the music that the youth enjoy today. We, we take that beat, that, that beat that everyone loves to have fun and party with, and we say real stuff over it. Yeah. You know, um, we have our party tracks. Of course, we're not boring, we wanna have fun too, you know, but every once in a while you gotta stop and talk about the issues. So we have, we have those songs and uh, yeah, if you want to get our look out for us, Super Friends, fan, <laughs> plug. Um, but yeah, what else? So going back to you and your group, so back then, how did you really, you know, fund and grow in that? Funding and growing in the group. Well, um, I'll start from the, from the, from the very beginning. Once you get out of high school, you have a you have to have a plan or you have to figure out something. So once I graduated, I immediately started working and I was going to community college. Um, and all of that was just to try to pay for whatever because you know I don't have real bills yet. Um, so once I did that, I started, I kept making my music. I met some guys that have like-minded, you have to find people that have like-minded ideas. Uh, so we all got together, there's seven of us. We all got together and said, well, what do we want? We wanna make music, we wanna, um, we wanna make money, but money's not important, that'll come later, you know? Um, we wanna be able to make this our actual job. So how do we do that? You have to work. So you get a real job, you pay the bills, and you put some money aside to support and fund what you are trying to accomplish, your personal goals. So, uh, and then, and that takes time because, you know, there's, like, like I said earlier, there's a lot of rappers out there. And uh, so you have to find that crap, like what's gonna make, what's gonna make people gravitate towards you? So all the while you're working, you're making money, and you're developing your sound. And um, you try to get people to, to uh, support you. You try to get people to come to your shows, buy your CDs, buy your merchandise. Uh, there's, there's a lot that goes into it behind the scenes. And all of that is self-funded, you know, because it take, the, the famous line is, it takes money to make money. Yeah. You know, so if you have a t-shirt, I had to pay for this t-shirt, you know? I had to pay for, uh, this hat that I have on, you know, um, and that's just for that's for just for marketing, you know, yeah. business cards, stickers, all that. It all comes into factor when you're having to save money and get your name out there, and, you know. And there's a lot of platforms online that'll help you, and you just gotta pay just a little bit of money, you know. Yeah. But um, also uh, there's the channel of uh, like ASCAP and BMI. Um, publishing and writing companies that you you uh, c do copyrights and once your songs get played over and over again you start to generate some money so once you make the money to pay for those rights then you start to see money come back in it's all it's all a big circle but in, at the end you want it to kind of just swing one way uh, do you have any advice for any viewers who want to start music now if you want to start music now you got to practice um, I grew up in choir um, and they always told you to practice, practice, practice. 
when you when you have to sing solos, you got to go into a practice room and learn all the music, um, and you have to uh, make sure that you dedicate enough time like you would watching Netflix or like you would going to a house party or you would go and hang out with your friends. It just depends on how important it is to you because anything that's important to you, if you have a social life, if you have, um, you know, you have sports or anything like that, all those things require some of your time. So if you want to do something for yourself, you have to devote that same amount of time to make it happen. Otherwise, you're just going to sit there and it's not going to happen. Hmm. And that's real. You just, if you want to start doing music, um, if you want to start doing music, find find what you like. Try to uh, try to intent, try to imitate it. Uh, that's the that's the best way to to start doing music. Like when I when I grew up, I was listening to uh, to Tupac, Most Def, hmm. um, uh, UGK, uh, Bun B, and I was trying to a little flip. I was trying to rap like all these people, and then once I finally like got their songs down and was digging it, I was like, man, maybe I can make my own. And then so I stepped to the side and started trying to write. Um, that's that's the quickest way to learn how to make music. Well, how to rap anyway. Making music, there's just so it's so deep. Like you can play keys or you can make beats on a keyboard. I mean, make beats on a um, computer. Uh, you can play guitar, drums. Music is there's so many outlets to music. You just got to find what fits for you and just dive in and 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 don't stop. That's the key. You, you will, you will get knocked down over and over. You're not supposed to get it right on the first try. If you did, there, there would be. I, I wouldn't even probably have an opportunity to make music. You know, yeah. if it were that easy, I would. You, I probably wouldn't be sitting here. I'd probably be in L.A. Yeah. or doing something big. You know, like going crazy. But, you know, like in, in, uh, if it were that easy, I don't think a lot. If, if nothing's ever worth, worth it unless you work for it. That's what I would say. So you're going to be performing here for us today. Tell us a little bit about the song that you're going to be performing and the history behind it. Uh, the song I'm going to be performing is called Crowd Control. Um, I actually uh, did one verse on one song and then wrote, wrote a verse from another. So I put those two verses together because they both fit the idea. And the idea is um, being a hip hop person, you need the crowd. and. The crowd is what gives you the energy in a live setting. They give you the energy and you give them the energy. It's all, y'all are all working together. Even though they're coming to see you, you're coming to perform for them. Okay. So you need, you need to be uplifted. And if no one's moving, sometimes it's hard. It's, it's really hard to get into it. But you, uh, at the end of the day, you have to just kind of like cut that. You have to put a wall up and give it your all. Even though there's no one there, you just gotta, you just gotta do it. Okay. So like, even if I'm performing in front of five, six people, and they could all be like middle school, you know, like I still gotta give that same energy that I would in an arena full of people. You know, I gotta have a big, a, a big feeling, big energy, and uh, yeah, that's what crowd control is about. It's just about getting the crowd to, you know, put their hands in the air, yeah. wave them around like they just don't care. You know, like <laughs> yeah. it's just to have fun, to have a good time. So where can we find this music? Um, that song specifically uh, is not recorded, but uh, the verses are on different songs, and you can find that on uh, datpiff, uh, D-A-T-P-I-F-F dot com, and search Mr. Mo, because I changed my name since then. So just take off Z-E-S and you'll find it. Um, the mixtape is called Influential, um, and uh, with my with my group, my music group, the Super Friends, we have uh, a lot of uh, we're seven artists, and we all have different styles. We have rappers that rap super super fast. We have some that that rap real cool, real calm. You know, we have ones that are high in energy. We have dudes that that just embody what hip hop should be. Um, you can find that on superfriends.bandcamp.com. Again, that's Super Friends, S O O P A F R E N D Z dot bandcamp dot com. And we have two mixtapes on that website, and we're also about to finish our album. And that album is going to be such a banger. I'm, I'm ready. And y'all should be ready too, because, yeah, if you want to hear real music, 
that has real subject matter and a couple of the songs that you can have fun to, it's the way to go, promise. And it takes you through an entire, an entire thing. Like there's, there's, we have skits in it. There's gonna be fun songs and some serious moments and songs that just make you really think. So we're trying to, we're trying to follow suit with good. So that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> when we come back, Mr. Moses will be in studio to perform Crowd Control. Stay tuned. What's up, Eagle Nation? It's your boy, Mr. Moses. One member of the Super Friends, look us up. We on Google. Would you share it? We on YouTube. We do things. <laughs> About to give you a little crowd control. Uh, check it. I pause a moment, take it in for another. The way that I'm feeling compares to no other. Got the mic in my right hand, crowd in my left. Conducting more orchestra with no instruments, yes. They holding on my every word in a sense. Like grabbing a rope and holding on in suspense. It was meant for me to write a song for the people, by the people. And the people get to jump and hike at the Neva Caneva land. It gets better by the minute, man. Crowd jam packed like clowns in a minivan. Count down from 10 all the way back to one. They screaming my name at the top of their lungs. But the mic didn't drop in the beat. Didn't stop. Now tell me what I got could it be? Hip hop? I'm thinking yes indeed, so I will proceed to give each and every one of you exactly what you need. And that beat, they need a little bit of crowd control. Yeah, just a little bit of crowd control. Uh, when I get a moving, that's crowd control. Hey, Mr. Moses just found your soul. What? They need a little bit of crowd control. Yeah, just a little bit of crowd control. Uh, when I get a moving, that's crowd control. Hey, feel the flow and go out of control. Now, in an ordinary setting of a rap, in the crowd, no lights in the audience, the music very loud, the rapper is the key to the people like a lock, and the music is the door, now turn it, don't knock, come on in and take a breath for the fresh air, pick out a set of headphones and call it headwear, it's like a perfect fit, glass slippers, Cinderella, midnight the clock strikes, the beats gone, I'm acapella, an entertainer, MC to say the very least, the crowd is my snow flow, shake them up, wear a fleece, call me Michael Jackson, moonwalking like I'm wearing grease, skipping across the stage like I sipped a Chuck Berry, Drink. The lady screaming, go, go, like I'm Johnny, so I'm doing my thing in the whole city behind me. So put a hand in the air with a match or a lighter. Let's show the whole world we got the fight. Yeah, they need a little bit of crowd control. Yeah, just a little bit of crowd control. Uh, when I get a moving, that's crowd control. Hey, Mr. Moses, found your soul. What? They need a little bit of crowd control. Yeah, just a little bit of crowd control. Uh, when I get a moving, that's crowd control. Hey. Feel the flow and go out of control. Hey, Eagle Nation. It's your boy, Mr. Moses. Hold it down for my boy, Brian Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy, you my dog. 11 years ago, you was my teacher. And now you over here doing big things for these kids. Keep it going, man. Back to y'all in the studio. Now I'm out. That's all for this show. Thanks for joining us. A big shout out to Mr. Moses for spitting that fire. And make sure to go look at Fleet Fox's new album, Crack Out. Join us next time on, on Another, Another Note. Note.